Without a doubt, hermit's tortoises are some of the most popular tortoise species on the planet, but a lot of people don't realize there is more than one. There's actually three different types, so come along with me because I'm gonna show you how to, without a doubt, properly identify the three different types of hermit's tortoise, starting with the Western, right here, right now. right here is Testudo hermani hermani, the western hermit's tortoise. Now on average, this is gonna be the smallest of the three types of hermits. It's also going to be the most colorful, and in fact, they have one of the highest contrasted carapaces in the turtle and tortoise world, because they're only two colors gold and black. The gold could be a different hue from anywhere between lemon yellow all the way up to almost an orange, but you're, what you're looking at right here is a very typical looking pure specimen. Now along with that contrast on the carapace are some pretty well-defined markings. Primarily this one right here. Doesn't that look like a keyhole or a mushroom cloud explosion? Well that is one of the most indicative traits of the Western Hermit's tortoise and every single specimen will have some version of that but only on the fifth vertebral scoot. Just below it is the supercaudal shield. See right there? That protects the tail. That is going to always be divided. While we're on the top part of the animal, let's take a look at its head. Just underneath and behind each eye, you will notice a small or sometimes large yellow spot. We call that the subocular cheek spot. It's always yellow. Sometimes it's more intense than others. Obviously, older animals, it may lose its intensity, but that is another indicative trait of the species. While on the subject of the head, though, they have a sharper, almost at times lizard or snake-like looking head with regular contours. When we look at the bottom of the tortoise, this is probably the most indicative trait of all. The two longitudinal jet black bands that run along the midline parallel to each other on the plastron. They start from the humeral scoots and go all the way down to the anal scoots, and sometimes there's a smudge or two on the inner or outer sides of the guler scoots, which are right here. But there's one other point to bring up while on the plastron. This right here, this seam between these two scoots, that's the pectoral scoot seam. This right here is the femoral scoot seam. In a pure Western Hermit's tortoise, the femoral scoot seam is always going to be longer than that of the pectoral. But you'll find that it's reversed in the other Hermit's tortoises. The Western Hermit's tortoise also has an interesting trait that's found in an area you might not think to look, and that's right here. This is called the inguinal scoot, that small triangle that's right at the bridge where the carapace and the plaster meet in front of each leg. Some people call it the thigh area. Regardless, a true Western Hermit's tortoise is going to have both of those, one on each side. The Western Hermit's tortoise overall has contrast all throughout it. Even its skin is often a beautiful yellow, and the nails, depending on the locality, can be a bright yellow, clear, or even black at times. Overall, the Western Hermit's tortoise is a much smaller, compact animal full of beauty as far as color and contrast goes, and they do differ greatly from the other Hermit's tortoises. So let's go take a look at them. Now the next Hermit's tortoise might be much more familiar to you guys because it is actually one of the most popular pets in the world of reptiles in general. This is the Eastern Hermit's tortoise. Testudo hermani bodgeri. This is the Eastern Hermans tortoise. And right off the bat, you should notice some obvious differences between this animal and the Western Hermans that we just showed you. For one, the Eastern Hermans is considerably larger. Every tortoise that I'm showing you in this video is a fully grown adult, so you can really get a gauge for that actual adult size might also notice the color. Now I know a lot of these tortoises are not wetted down and they're a little bit dusty from moving around in their enclosure, but you should be able to get a pretty general idea here. You'll notice there's less intensity to the carapace of this animal. A little bit less black on average, more frayed markings, and you'll even see that the yellow background color or ground color is more of an okra, olive, or even straw color instead of that really deep golden or lemon yellow or even orange that we will see on the Western Hermit's tortoise. The carapace overall is a little bit flatter and broader, wider, whereas the Western Hermit's tortoise comes up a little bit more of an arc or a pitch. When we look at the fifth vertebral scoot on the Eastern Hermit's tortoise, you see how it lacks that really nice keyhole or mushroom cloud explosion marking? That's a telltale trait that it's an Eastern Hermit's tortoise because there's no real definition to the marking on that fifth vertebral scoot. When it comes to the supercaudal shield, it might be divided, it might not be divided. 
When we look at the head of the Eastern Hermit's tortoise, you'll notice a bit of a blunter snout and an overall robust or brawnier looking head. And they will lack that really definitive subocular cheek spot that you see on the Western Hermans just below and behind each eye. Now let's look at the plastron on the Eastern Hermit's tortoise. Right off the bat, you'll notice that they lack those two parallel jet black bands that you see on the Western Hermit's tortoise. In this subspecies, they are gonna be broken up with no real continuity to them. Last but not least on the plastron here, the seams of the pectoral scutes and the femoral scutes are reversed. In the Eastern Hermit's tortoise, the pectoral scoot seam is gonna be longer than that of the femoral scoot seam. And that is the Eastern Hermit's tortoise. Now, let's go take a look at yet another Hermit's tortoise. With markings that are more conspicuous than the Eastern Hermit's tortoise, but not quite there yet as far as the Western Hermit's tortoise goes, this right here is your middle ground. This is the Dalmatian tortoise, Testudo hermani herzegovinensis. Now I say herzegovinensis because unfortunately taxonomists have demoted this unique little tortoise to being considered just a geographical variant of the common Eastern Hermit's tortoise, when in fact anybody that keeps these or has seen them in the flesh, even in the wild, will say they are very unique and probably more worthy of being elevated back up to at least subspecies level. But that's a talk for another day. Nonetheless, we treat this animal as a valid subspecies and they get their own pen because we would never breed them to Westerns or Eastern Hermans tortoises. These guys are small. Not usually as small as the Western Hermans, but considerably smaller than the big Eastern Hermans tortoise. And if you notice, it's also pretty round doesn't have as high of an arc on the shell as the Western Hermans will, but it's also not as flat as the Eastern Hermans tortoise. These animals develop a nice yellow, but it actually does turn to an olive with age. They have bolder markings, and when it comes to the fifth vertebral scoot on the carapace, they sometimes have a marking that's reminiscent of a keyhole, but on average they do not. And even when they do, it is nowhere near as defined as what you see in the Western Hermans tortoise. That supracaudal shield, as you can see on this animal, is not divided which does make it pure, but if it was divided, it would also be considered pure. Now, let's move this animal over to the front and take a look at its cute little face. And I say cute because I consider the Dalmatian tortoise to have a really cute little blunt snout. It's almost like the face just kind of stops. It doesn't really come to any kind of point as you see in the Western Hermans tortoise, and it's nowhere near as brawny looking as what we see in the Eastern Hermans tortoise. On the top of the head, there are two distinct markings at the back, and it looks almost like the top of a heart, and those are often a very fluorescent green. Sometimes they're a little bit more yellow, and you can see this, or at least a version of it, on other Hermans tortoises, but it's really distinct in the Dalmatian, one of their telltale traits, in my opinion. As far as the subocular patch goes, sometimes they have something reminiscent of it, but all of these will turn very dark with age as far as the facial features go, and the eyes are considerably larger. The skin, again, matches the shell just like we see in Eastern Hermans tortoises. On the plastron is where the Dalmatian tortoise really features some interesting traits that set it apart from others. When you look here, as I showed you in the other tortoises, the inguinal scoots are actually missing. This is where it does get a little bit confusing though. Dalmatian tortoises typically will lack both of them. Some animals only lack one, and then even fewer animals, but there are some, do have inguinal scoots on both sides. But when they do have them, they're usually shorter and more of a wide triangle, whereas in the other two Hermans tortoises, they're much longer and they almost wrap all the way up. Now, as far as the bands on the plastron go, they're a little bit more continuous in the Dalmatian tortoise than in the Eastern Hermans tortoise, but of course, they do not compare to the solidity that's seen on the Western Hermans tortoise. Last but not least, let's take a look at these two scoot seams here. In the Dalmatian, it doesn't matter if the pectoral is longer than the femoral or vice versa, and often they're very close in length. The big deal is this seam right here. This is called the humeral scoot seam, and what happens is it dips down in a very distinct sharp U. Not so much a V and not a squiggly line, but a very sharp U. And I've yet to see a very pure Dalmatian tortoise that doesn't have that. It can be found on the Western Hermans, but usually you don't see it on the Eastern. And that is your basic gist when it comes to the wonderful little Dalmatian tortoise. 
So I would imagine that some of you are probably confused by the information I've fed you over the last three tortoises here, and that's okay, because when I first started out, I didn't know what I was reading or watching, and it was all so confusing to me. I mean, they're all Herman's tortoises, right? Well, yeah, but it is worthy to note that they are, in fact, different enough to where they should never be kept together. These animals, particularly the western Herman's tortoise, is threatened by things, not just the typical things that threaten turtles and tortoises in the wild, but also impurity. This animal is being accidentally or sometimes even purposely mixed with these two, which are much more common animals. This is an endangered tortoise right here. The Western Hermit's tortoise is one of the most endangered tortoises or reptiles of Western Europe. So it's important for it to stay pure. People let these go in nature and then they end up mixing with native uh, Hermit's tortoises that live in France, Spain, and Italy, which mean they are Western, uh, and also in captivity people do one of two things. They don't realize what they have and they mix them together, or because the Western Hermit's tortoise is rare and fetches a high price typically, people will create hybrids just to make a quick buck. Now hybrids are not as easy to detect as the pure examples of these animals, and we'll save that for another video where I can really show you guys what to look for in hybrid tortoises. But the point of this video is to clear up the confusion between these three wonderful examples of a hermit's tortoise. And what better way to do that than to compare the three side by side? All right, so let's compare the western hermit's tortoise to the eastern hermit's tortoise. Remember, this one rare, this one pretty common. Right off the bat, more contrast on the western, a deeper golden yellow, whereas the eastern hermit's tortoise is going to have more of a straw color to the shell and more frayed markings. And when we turn them to the back, I know you guys can see that. On that fifth vertebral scoot, the Western Hermit's tortoise has that beautiful, distinct keyhole marking where the Eastern does not. If I can get them to cooperate here, we can get a close look at their heads. The Western Hermit's tortoise has those regular contours, a little bit more of a sharper point, think more lizard-like, and it also has the subocular spot just below and behind each eye whereas the Eastern Hermans has a blunter, more robust head, bigger eyes, and does not have that distinct cheek spot. Looking at the plastron, it should really be coming clear to you guys now. Look at those two beautiful jet black unbroken bands on the Western Hermans tortoise, whereas the Eastern Hermans tortoise over here does not have that kind of continuous striping on either side. Very distinct. And last but not least, the femoral scoot seam on the plastron of the Western Hermit's tortoise is wider than that of the pectoral, and that is clearly reversed in the Eastern Hermit's tortoise. Now let's bring the Dalmatian back into the mix here. Similar in size, right? But yet the Western is still a bit smaller. And again, these are all adult animals. These happen to be egg-laying females, so there's not gonna be any other difference in size here. When we look at the markings of the carapace, you can see the Dalmatian does have more definition and contrast to it than the Eastern typically does, but it is no match for what's going on on the Western Hermit's tortoise. And when we turn them around and look at the back, once again, the Western has that keyhole symbol, whereas the Dalmatian does not. Looking at the heads, clear differences. Nice, cute, blunt snout on the Dalmatian. The Western has that pointier snout and also the defined subocular cheek spot. And on the top of the head, the Dalmatian has those two green markings that look like the top of the heart, whereas the Western is most likely going to be lacking them. And let's compare Eastern to Dalmatian, which you can see there are a lot more similarities between these two. In some regard, it's no surprise that taxonomists would demote this to a geographical variant of the Eastern. They are pretty close, but there are definitely obvious differences. Look at the shape alone and the markings. The Dalmatian is pretty round, whereas the Eastern Hermit's tortoise is very elongate, more oval, and in sometimes very trapezoidal. Last but not least, I just want to show you guys a close-up of the plastron of all three animals, and I don't want to keep them upside down for long, but it is very important that you guys know what to look for on the plastron because that is where things really become telltale. Western Hermit's tortoise, unbroken jet black bands, femoral scoots seem larger than the pectora. Dalmatian has some continuity, but not as much as the Western Hermit's tortoise, and it has a really sharp U on the humeral scoot seam. The Eastern Hermit's tortoise has even less definition to these black bands on the plastron. It has more of a V here, and the pectoral scoot seam is clearly larger than that of the femoral. So there are your plastron things, but don't forget about the inguinal scoots. You'll see the Dalmatian is lacking both, whereas the Eastern and the Western both have them. 
Being a member of the famous European genus of tortoises known as Testudo, Herman's tortoises are of course subject to extreme variation. So before I go, I do have to warn you that every single little detail that I explain to you in this video about Herman's tortoises is subject to variation. And that's because nature is always going to throw us for a loop. Take Athena right here, the giant Eastern Herman's tortoise. If you recall back a couple of videos, I told you her story and how she is the largest known example of an Eastern Herman's tortoise in the United States, measuring 11.2 inches, whereas most Eastern Herman's tortoises tend to top out between seven and eight inches. So take all of that into consideration, and also that when it comes to the babies of Herman's tortoises, things are even harder when it comes to telling them apart. We could do a video for you guys, so let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that, and I'd also like to know what other tortoises you'd like to see me compare. Maybe we'll do a Greek tortoise video, which would be pretty nuts if you're looking to have your head explode. Nonetheless, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out this video right here.